Welcome to the NFL Week 12 Sunday Night Football Player Props Breakdown. Here we're talking about the Ravens and the Chargers. Really exciting primetime matchup here. Just finished recording our game picks video, so go check that out as well. I'm your host, Jacob Wayne, joined as always by Cody Malstrom and Will Schwartz. Got some great player prop content to get into here for you guys. Schwartz, you have been a huge Zay Flowers proponent all season, so I'm going to lead you right into that. I'm assuming you're going to take his prop in this game, so let's go right there. I can't believe this wasn't scripted. I'm going Zay Flowers under 65 and a half receiving yards. Uh, we talked about in the game picks video, please uh, feel free to go back to that one, that the Chargers have one of the league's worst run defenses. It's terrible. And the Ravens' rushing offense is about as good as a rushing offense can be. Line's gotten some health back. Uh, Lamar is phenomenal. Gus Edwards is hot. Yeah, simple as that. The Ravens are going to be a ground-first team in this football game. And I know Lamar's missing Mark Andrews, and he's going to be able to have success passing when he does pass, but I just don't know how many reps he's going to get uh, through the air. Could be a huge Lamar ground game, uh, which I enjoy seeing as a fantasy owner and uh, MVP future holder. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to go under for Zay. The Ravens haven't been going he hasn't been getting as much of a share recently he's been over this number 65 and a half in one of his last four games I love Zay I still believe in him I'm just not sure this is exactly the spot uh to bet Ravens passing volume in general so I'm gonna fade him here well that was a shocking and unexpected turn of events um damn <laughs> didn't see that coming Cody that any was- thoughts on Zay Flowers or any props you want to get into here um I, I mean, I disagree. I think Will's thinking like it's going to be a drastic decrease in pass attempts. I personally don't see it that way, though I do agree that we'll probably see an uptick in rush attempts late, but it really depends if the Chargers can just keep it in scoring pace or not. Um, they certainly have the passing to do it, but they've been so one-dimensional lately. It'll be intriguing to see how the Ravens kind of piece it together, but also Marlon Humphrey's questionable, so that could be a big part of it. So I'll get right into mine. I'm going to attack the passing department, but I'm going to go the other way around. I'm going to go Justin Herbert over 244 and a half passing yards. If, if the Chargers want to stay within scoring pace, it's going to come off the backs of, or it's going to come off the arm of Justin Herbert. It's the only thing that they got going for them really right now. This Austin Eckler in the ground game, it's been inexcusably off. I won't say bad, but it's definitely not what it, it should be. And Justin Herbert, he's rounding back into form. Um, as we mentioned in the game picks video, um, this is going to be the toughest test for the Ravens secondary who has been uh, kind of prone to getting beat at times. And Justin Herbert, I mean, if he's firing at all cylinders and connecting with Keenan Allen, spacing out the defense, it'll be really intriguing to see what they can do. And also this number is wildly different um, across sports books. So once again, um, always be sure to have as many books as you can for as many outs. It's as high as 253 and a half. So yeah, I'm getting nine yard difference. That could be the difference maker right there. Uh, so, yeah, be sure to shop around, get the best number. Justin Herbert, over 244 and a half passing yards. Yeah, to illustrate that point that Cody made, I'm I, this is one of mine. Sorry, Wayne, to jump in before you've gotten one done, but this is on my list, so we're going to do it now. I have a 250, two and a half, so I still feel great about it, but if you're given the opportunity, definitely find the number Cody has. He's been in this number of four of his last five games. The only exception is the Jets, and that was a very weird game and a good— and, Jets were doing nothing. Chargers didn't need to go to the air too much. The Ravens defend the pass well, but they defend the run too well. We've talked about this at length in the Game Picks video. We're already touching it on this video. Herbert is going to have to throw. I think the Ravens are going to pull away a bit, uh, which you know lends to a passing type of game script. It's not going to be Herbert's most efficient passing game of all time because it's a really good defense. But it's just it's simply put, great passer, a lot of passing attempts. Good amount of passing yards, 250, 244, whatever it is. It's not a super high bar for someone like Herbert in a game where he could have high 30s or even 40 plus attempts. Yeah, I like this prop a lot. Um, I, th- I We talked about it in the game picks video a little bit. I think the Ravens defense is good, but overvalued in the market a little bit based on the quarterbacks they face. So definitely makes a lot of sense to me. Going back to the Ravens side of the ball, though, and we talked about the Mark Andrews injury. Um, not officially out for the year, but definitely at least out for this week and the next several weeks uh, with the ankle injury. So going to be a shift in target share for this team. And while I do think Zay Flowers has a great opportunity here, I'm a little bit worried because he didn't practice on Thursday. And we're recording this on Friday. We don't have full practice reports for Friday quite yet. So going to wait and see on that one. But definitely monitor that. The player who I am very interested, though, if the Ravens right now is Odo Beckham Jr. And he had... Four catches for 116 yards last week. I thought he looked awesome in that game. And just eye test alone, like, he looks like a player who's ready for a bigger role in this offense. 
Um, his 39% first read target share with Andrews out for all but four snaps in that game was the highest on the team, according to fantasy points data. And his target per route run rate jumps from 19% to 25% with Andrews off the field. So going to be much more involved bottom line in this game. He's dealing with his own injury, but he, he answered a question about it to reporters today at practice. And he said, it's more just a pain tolerance thing and he'll be out there. Um, it sounds like, and he has 40 plus receiving yards in four of his last five games. We talked about it. This Chargers pass defense is not good. 29th in pass defense success rate. Their secondary is highly vulnerable. We've seen that week after week against some of these receivers that they faced. And yeah, I think OBJ is ready for a bigger role in this offense. So give me his over on receiving yards, currently sitting at 40 and a half on FanDuel. And I like his touchdown prop at uh, plus 210, plus 230. Make sure you're getting the best number. There's a plus 240 on Caesar. So make sure you're getting the best number there. But yeah, I like OBJ to have a big game here. You want Cody on a moment? I, I saw it before you did. <laughs> uh, Tim Boyle to... pass deep left, intercepted at the with Miami one second line left in hail mary, ninety nine yard touchdown. Pick six on a hail mary after Tua had thrown his second pick. Damn. <laughs> Anyways, that covered, the, that covered the Dolphins' first half spread too. Wow. But all right, so I'll get right into my next pick after that. Um, I'll keep this really short and sweet. Uh, <laughs> we're going Gus Edwards anytime touchdown. It's minus 110, minus 105 on most books, but if you have access to Caesars, it's plus 125. I, I, it's plain and simple. You get in the 10, you get in the 5, the ball's going to Gus. Gus, bus, whatever you want to call him. Ravens, best running team inside the red zone. Going against the Chargers defense, who actually kind of excels in a way of stopping the run. They're 16th in rush defense EPA when backed up. I'm not too worried about it. It's still going to be a massive advantage towards the Ravens' favor, um, especially if they're kind of rolling out Isaiah Likely, who is more of a true pass-catching tight end. Um, if they kind of space him out, it's going to have to really thin out the Chargers' back end. I fully expect Gus Bus to just hit the hole hard, punch it in for another touchdown. Yeah, um, Cody semi-sniped me again. I'm going to go with Gus over 48 and a half rushing yards. That was one of my plays too. Uh, yeah, he's been over this in four of the last uh, five games. The other one was the Browns, which is just a magnificent defense. Uh, and that was a weird shootout where the I don't know, Ravens were going to the air a lot, where I don't see that happening. We've talked about this at length. I think the Ravens are going to be leading. The Chargers rush defense is 26 in DVOA. The Ravens, Ravens rush offense is first. And I know part of that's Lamar, but Gus has been playing some – Good football too, getting some good traditional running plays in. It, it's just it's a really low number for what should be a completely uncompetitive matchup at the line of scrimmage between the Ravens and the Chargers. I just I don't see how unless this turns into a mega shootout where Lamar does throw a ton of times and all of my picks break except for the Herbert over. Uh, yeah, this is uh, one that I feel very strongly about. This might be my favorite one in the in this game. Yeah, it seems like it could definitely be a big game for Gus Edwards. I think. Overall, just this Ravens offense in general should have a lot of success. I want to ask you guys, though, any thoughts on Keaton Mitchell stealing more work? Uh, he's looked super dynamic anytime he's been on the field. I guess it's more of a question for Schwartz and Cody because Cody's just banking on a red zone carry at some point. But Schwartz, any concern about Keaton Mitchell taking more workload in this game? Yeah, I, I, I don't think Gus is going to need a tremendous amount of carries uh, to hit this number. Say he's average. I, I, like, I don't think that he's in danger of going into single digits, for instance, and I don't think he needs really – I think he can average five a carry for sure against his Chargers defense. So I'm not particularly concerned. Uh, Mitchell's looking awesome. I just don't think he's that close to stealing the job from someone who's not only been in the system for quite some time. He's established himself uh, behind Mark Ingram when he was the guy. But he's also playing some really good football right now. So I, I think Gus has too much working behind him at this point. It's great to be able to rotate running backs and have a stable. You don't want to be doing like a McCaffrey situation where you're running the ball 16,000 times a year. But – I think that Gus is going to get, at the very least, 1A carries for the foreseeable future. Yeah, that's fair. Um, the other one, and it's not an official pick for me, but it's more of just a lean. And Lamar, it was Lamar Jackson over one and a half passing touchdowns because I think this is a game where he could really open up the offense through the air. And the, the loss of Mark Andrews makes it probably just a pass for me, but I really do think he's going to have a good passing game overall. And yeah, this Chargers secondary is very vulnerable. Last two weeks, they allowed both Jordan Love and Jared Goff to go over two passing touchdowns. 
They've allowed a lot of quarterbacks over that threshold this season. And it hasn't been a high hit rate for Lamar this year, but this is just a game where I think he's going to be a highly productive passer. So that's, that's what I'm looking at too, but not an official pay for me. Cody, anything else? The Lamar to Gus Edwards passing touchdown is going to be so sick. (laughs) (laughs) Cody, anything else you like in this game? No, just the two for me. Um, Will, are you good? Am I good to just recap? Or I would I would like to make a quick remark, uh, not that I necessarily have another pick. I always try and do a defensive and special teams prop for every single primetime video. This is the first one this year I'm not going to. Uh, they're available, uh, but I don't. I want to give you guys winning picks, and I don't think the odds environment makes any sense. There, there's crazy juice on Tucker, and frankly, none of the lines make sense. So apologies to the fans of the special team pick. Uh, congratulations to everyone who's been asking me to get rid of it. Uh, where you're getting a day off. The, the, the numbers don't make any sense. Uh, it'll be back, though. Schwartz, I'm surprised you're not going with Justin Tucker over seven and a half kicking points because I feel like is a good spot for him. It's kind of a weird number. I mean, that Raven, I'm just afraid of the Ravens red zone offense. It's so good. Punches in a bunch of times. But I can't, I can't bet against Tucker because the Ravens could stall out. Forget the red zone. The Ravens could stall out at midfield and Tucker could get three points out of that. So Tucker's a really tough kicker to beat because, or to bet on because you have to, you don't want to bet on improbable things such as him hitting from 65 yards, but you really can't rule them out. So I really don't like playing Tucker other than extra point props when I think it makes sense with the Ravens offense. And I don't know if you're looking at it right now, Wayne, but his extra points prop, either the number is really high or it's a lower number with incredible juice. So I'm not, I'm not willing to touch it, and I'm very confused about the Chargers' offense and what they're going to do in this one, so I'm not touching Dicker either. Fair enough. All right, let's get into some recap. Cody, go for it. Yeah, we're going Justin Herbert over 244.5 passing yards. Um, big discrepancy in the market, so be sure to get the best number available. And then we're going Gus Edwards, anytime touchdown, plus 125 at Caesars. Schwartz. Uh, Herbert over, I got 252 and a half. Go find your best number. Uh, Gus over 48 and a half rushing. Zay Flowers under 65 and a half receiving. Ready, I'd be excited to lose that one, honestly. Yeah, and I'm going with Odo Beckham Jr. over 40 and a half receiving yards and any time touchdown. Best odds currently plus 240 on Caesars. Uh, lean to Lamar Jackson over one and a half passing touchdowns as well. And then. The one I wanted to shout out, and I'm disappointed because he didn't practice today, so we have to monitor that, and I'm not going to be super confident in it, but Charlie Kolar, uh, the tight end for the Ravens, I think he's going to have a good opportunity here, and I really loved his production profile coming out of Iowa State as a, as a rookie. Um, this is his second season, I believe, in the NFL, and with Mark Andrews out, I think he's going to see more of a workload for this team. Obviously, the injury is uh, definitely going to throw a wrench into that for him, so monitor that, but... You can get his touchdown odds at plus 1,100 on FanDuel right now. Definitely worth a flyer if he plays in this game. I can see him scoring a touchdown here. So like the upside on that one. But that'll do it for us. Hope you guys enjoy what should be a really fun Sunday night football game here between the Ravens and the Chargers. Check out our game picks video as well for talk about the spread and the over-under. Please like and subscribe, and we'll catch you guys on the next one.